Why, hello everyone, it is January 10th, episode 7 of the News As I See It. Okay, up first we just have various patch notes and things coming up very soon, by the end of the month for Planet Side 2. If you play Planet Side 2, or you don't, or you've heard things, or you haven't, either way, it's an amazing game, I really suggest checking it out. If you want to come play with us, feel free, we're on the New Conglomerate Army on the server Matherson. Come by, it is an awesome game. I'm going to link a video to FNG Eddy. He made this awesome slow motion cinematic, no UI, no HUD um, video planet side. It's amazing. Please go check it out. You will not regret it. I guarantee it. Now, so this is patch notes talking about tons of bugs that have been gathering lately. Now, they had a very long holiday break over at SOE, especially the planet side 2 team. That's good. They've been working very hard on this game. It came out just a little bit before the holidays. They deserved a break. However, people had a lot of downtime in the holidays and were able to find a lot of bugs. And people got really mad at all the bugs they were finding. And a lot of people have kind of left Planet Side 2 or have put it on the back burner until a lot of things got fixed. So many things are being addressed with this patch. I mean, I can't even begin to tell you how awesome just these few things are. And then they're also going to be releasing a six-month plan of features to come, updates, things like that. I can't wait. I want to see that huge aircraft carrier thing. Or, it's like an aircraft aircraft carrier. So, I'm stoked for that because it's a flying, like, shield helicarrier thing. I'm stoked. And if you don't play Planet Side, you really should. Just come hang out with us or check out the live streams I have on my channel. Okay, the game City of Steam. It's very interesting. It's a steampunk MMO. I followed it loosely, but it is now, or soon to be, going into open beta. So definitely go check it out. Check out this site. Go watch some videos. Kind of see what you think. And see if you want to sign up for the open beta. It's really cool. And clearly they've done a lot of things to fix the game. A lot of complaints have been addressed. I'm going to check it out at the very least. I'm not a steampunk fan because usually it's steampunk is done for no reason. But when it's done right, it can be really, really interesting. Okay, so I've talked a little bit about Defiance, the sci-fi MMO made by Tryon Worlds, people who made Rift, that also has a sci-fi channel TV tie-in show coming out in the next coming months. Now, I've seen a lot of various gameplay footage on the game. I know a lot, of, a lot about various parts of it. However, they just released a trailer. It is amazing. It is super cool. Holy hell, go watch this trailer. This, what you're seeing, that's gameplay footage. That's a little flock of dudes running to go fight a boss. They have ATVs and buggies and trucks and laser guns and stuff. Oh my god, I can't wait to play this game. I hope I can get into the testing phase, the next round of it. Go watch this trailer, sign up for the testing. Hopefully when it comes out, you know, we can get some really cool, you know, massive groups going in this game. I'm really looking forward to it. Always love MMOs. Love sci-fi, and I really love a strong PvP element. I love Planet Side; it's amazing, but this is almost like the same sort of realm, but with a it's a it's a PVE game. So I'm super excited for this. Okay, coming is really no news. Yet yeah, another MMO is going free to play. This time it's Terra, Terra Rising. I don't know why they. I don't know if they even realize it sounds like Terra Rising. Or if they just said Terra Rising, but it sounds like Terra Rising, so whatever. But at any rate, it's apparently going to be 100% free to play, possibly not unlike Guild Wars, although Guild Wars does have a you know a initial purchase. Either way, it's going free to play. The core game will be free. They will have a cash shop. We'll see exactly how monetization goes from there. But either way, I will actually check the game out since it's going to go free to play. I had no interest to play it with a subscription, none. Not even doing. A trial to see if I liked it to want to subscribe I initially just said I've seen it and I don't want to subscribe to this I will not even touch it I'll check it out now why not it's gonna be free either way you can go check it out watch videos gear yourself up for when it goes free it is a cool game it's just very much not my usual style okay if you're familiar with like art installation pieces you might be familiar with the term like a cave the caves were really popular. They were basically, you walk into a room, and possibly the floor, ceiling, and walls were all projected images or TV screens of images taken with, you know, 3D photography, CG, 
all sorts of things, but the idea was a full immersed experience. This to me takes that idea and puts it in the living room. I'm assuming for 200 or less dollars. It seems like you'd have behind you a connect like device that instead of being a camera is a projector and is displaying across the TV and the wall around the TV in the room around you images related to what you're doing. So if you're playing a video game, you would have bullets actually being displayed on the wall to make it look like a quasi 3D image. Now if you're playing in 3D and you have the whole room wrapped in a fake dimensional reality, it'll make your peripheral vision seem like you're actually immersed in a world. This is basically virtual reality to an extent. I want to see where this goes. This could be really amazing. In things like Star Wars, Avatar, big CG cinematic movie experiences, it can also really come into play. However, it seems like this is more video game driven and will rely on knowing the surrounding 3D world to display it around you. Not exactly sure how this is going to work, but the possibilities are relatively infinite and I hope things like this keep pushing and pushing and pushing because either we're going to be in a cave-like system with full immersion in the room or we're going to be wearing Oculus Rifts and not have to worry about it. Alright, at CES a lot of stuff has been going on, way too much for me to even begin to cover, so I'm only covering things that are super important to gaming, such as all the prototypes they've been displaying of the Steam Box. Now, given they are very, very crummy hardware solutions in terms of, you know, I guess not hardware solutions, but the visual solution isn't what you're going to be getting. You know, they have just thrown in their Logitech controllers just to be able to control the device. This isn't at all what it will look like or play like. These are more or less archetypes for the possible Steam box. More or less like, here is an $800 model of what we could pull off. This is what $800 would get you in a Steam box. That kind of thing. Do I know the prices? No, I don't. However, the fact that they're showing off these prototypes at CES shows that this is going to happen. Steam box is pretty much greenlit and it's going to be full production. Will it kill Xbox and things like that? If the holiday sales and things transfer over to it, of course it will. They're going to demolish the frontier. Because, I mean, you still have to subscribe to Xbox Live to even get their online content. It's kind of ludicrous. And that will be going away soon, too, because they're no longer the king of uh, online services. So the tides are changing, and uh, I really hope Steambox can sort of you know, niche its way into the industry and give a lot of people who don't have access to the, you know, the wide array of PC gaming that we all do, or not we all do, but that PC gamers do, I hope, the console casual experience can actually enjoy some of these awesome games that they haven't been able to before. Okay, so I'm a huge SimCity fan, RTSs in general, simulation games in general, and the new SimCity looks so amazing, I can't wait to play it, especially the multiplayer parts. And here's yet another trailer for SimCity. The intro video is really cool, if you've never seen any of their videos, go watch the other videos because they talk about very specific aspects of the game. and. If you would all like RTS's Sim City style games, go watch these featurette videos. If you don't like what you see, I don't think you like the genre because this is going to be just groundbreaking, genre defying gameplay, especially with these multiplayer components seamlessly integrated from what I can tell. I cannot wait to play this game. They need to freaking release it already. <laughs> So following up on the whole Firefly Universe Online MMO that was kind of hard to tell if Fox had given them a cease and desist or what the deal was, but there was no cease and desist, but they have Dark Cryo and Fox have actually been, you know, working out what Dark Cryo can and cannot do, and the Firefly MMO is in production. There it is, right there. I hope it works out. I would love to play a Firefly MMO. I think this environment right here looks really awesome. It does not look unlike Fable. I really want to check it out. I hope it goes into some sort of testing phase or anything that I can jump into and get an early look at it or they start releasing more you know, gameplay footage and things like that because Firefly, fan Firefly fans are very diehard and if a good MMO was made in the IP, they would all play it. 
and it would do very well for a very long time as long as they structured it properly. So I hope this goes somewhere. If you've never seen anything on Remember Me, it looks a little bit like iRobot meets Ghost in the Shell in a sort of a Assassin's Creed GTA sort of universe. Just go watch this trailer and be the judge for yourself on what you think this game is going to be like. I think it looks pretty awesome. You know, how the overarching gameplay will feel and the story will actually, you know, how it will progress is another story. But what they're showing looks really good. I'm super impressed. And I'm loving all these near future sci-fi sort of sandboxy games they're releasing. I just want more of them and I want more of them. And I want them to go ahead and come out so I can freaking play them already. So if you are or even not familiar with MMOs, you'll appreciate this infographic. It's fun, interesting and you know shed some light on different parts of MMO culture the environment of MMOs you know just go to the site scroll down check it out there's some really interesting numbers and infographics in general at least I find to be incredibly interesting so check it out a lot of info a lot of fun facts I think you'll appreciate it as I was scrolling through the news I saw this thumbnail and go that is an awesome render I had heard and seen this news article several times didn't care about it had never seen this render I wasn't a fan of Heavy Rain because I'm not a huge fan of sort of like detective-y mystery type games. It's just not my style. I appreciated the game, just didn't care for it. However, this is that, you know, company's next game. It is Beyond Two Souls. Just look at this render. I mean, it speaks for itself. And I then said, this looks a lot like Ellen Page. And my friends confirmed, well, it is Ellen Page. But it is a render, so it's based off Ellen Page. This looks amazing. I can't wait to see more. I'm going to go look up more stuff on it in a little bit. However, just look at this. It's kind of unreal. Go check it out for yourself. If it's not high enough resolution for you, you can really appreciate the freaky nuances of human-like characteristics. It's going to be very soon where we just can't trust uh, video calls and things. If People are going to be able just to plug into a CG, sim, you know, CG engine and start Controlling faces look just like Ellen Page. What's the world coming to? Alright, so this isn't so much gaming news, but a lot of gamers do, you know, stream video content. Okay, so this isn't gaming news, but it is Netflix news, and I know just about everyone watches Netflix. It's super amazing just to be able to watch hundreds of thousands of TV shows and movies. And Netflix has just released Netflix Super HD, which is 1080p streaming to certain ISPs and devices. You'll have to check out to see if your ISP actually supports this because I know a lot of people or a lot of ISPs won't because they kind of, you know, lose money, aka aren't totally emptying your pockets and robbing you blind. But they're also going to be doing 3D streaming, which is amazing. It's only inevitable that that would happen. And then also they're going to be using user profiles. So, you know, me and my wife could have her own profile and we don't have to worry about, you know, me getting her girly stuff and she getting my Japanese murder films. So... All of these things are amazing, and they're all inevitable changes I've been waiting for, really, all of them. I've wanted a 3D TV, and now it's actually kind of a practical reason to get one if Netflix will start having 3D content. Not yet, because there's not going to be enough content, but eventually, in the maybe the year to come, there will be enough 3D content to merit getting a 3D TV. So there's one piece of tech from CES that I found on Engadget that I've been waiting for for a while. Now you always see in movies like they have like the Navy SEALs and the Green Berets like the little like throat microphone like strapped to their neck and they're like yeah I'm gonna come get you okay bye you know they do that whole deal. I've also seen all kinds of audio devices in terms of you know conical ear implants all sorts of things you know you can tap into your bones and transmit audio waves and it sounds like you're living in some sort of symphony so these Panasonic headphones are going to be using the bones on your skull to basically vibrate sounds into your head. And it sounds like crisp audio. Sign me up. I think this is an amazing idea. I would like someone to use it for about five years prior to see if brain cancer is going to happen or deaf or inner ear damage. Who knows? This actually sounds like you'll be avoiding all of these things because headphones realistically sound kind of crazy. You have two holes in your head that ventilate steam, or not steam, but heat to keep you cool, and also excrete earwax and things, and you're putting stuff over them so they can't really do their job, and then you're not hearing the real world. 
So ambiance is kind of cut away and you kind of lose perception and your inner ear gets a little funny. I hope this is the solution to that. However, obviously you'll be able to hear the world around you. Is that a good or bad thing? That's up to you in terms of experience you want. Obviously, I like having a little bit of isolation. So who knows where this is going? They could actually have it where, oddly enough, they have the things on your bones and then like earplugs attached to them or something to negate the environmental sounds. But either way, this is a super interesting piece of technology. And a lot of these things have been around for a long time, but this is consumer grade, which means you'll actually be able to buy it. So as of now, that is the news as I see it. I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you have any news stories you'd like me to talk about tomorrow or in the days to come, please tweet them at me at Algol Gaming or at Algol's News or hashtag Algol's News. And as always, come tune in for the Sunday uh, podcast. It's going to be live with me and FNG Eddie. It's going to be on my YouTube channel. It'll be a live stream. We don't talk to the viewers. We try and get through it as fast as we can, more or less so that the recording will be a crisp, easy-viewed experience. So I'll see you guys tomorrow.